because although this is a weird time we're in, we're gonna get through it. Everything's gonna be fine. It wasn't like I overthought it. It was just I just thought I'm gonna try it and see what happens. I still can't fathom a hundred million views. Can't believe that. I was really not ready for this wave of emotion and gratitude that came through. One thing I never expected was that so many of the mums and dads who took part with their kids would start contacting me, not about their physical health, but about their mental health. As a mid-40s woman who has suffered with anxiety and depression, again, the words that keep popping up is just literally anxiety, depression, anxiety, depression, so much of it. You can't process that. You can't, you can't just go, oh, that's another one, thanks. Like, it's every single one of these stories that is a real person. The thing is, I do relate to it. My mum and dad were up and down, up and down all my life. With my dad, it was heroin and drugs. I remember just being really upset when my dad relapsed. I just hated how it took him away, like drugs took him away from me. It was really tough. The other day, I did that. And with my mum, it was OCD and extreme cleaning. The hardest time for me was, was during my teenage years when I really understood that my dad was a drug addict. That was when I was at my most angry and resentful, I think, because it was always, every year was a relapse, man. It was like constant. It's so frustrating when the person you love, you just want them to be clean. When he relapsed, I remember the first thing I did, I got a job and I, I went straight down the gym and joined the gym and I used to go every single day, seven days a week. I'd train harder and harder and I'd push myself. The gym was my sanctuary. I just felt like I wanted to go somewhere where I could just let out all that stress and tension, all that frustration. Today, after many years of therapy, my dad's clean and we have a great relationship. But we've never really talked about how his addiction affected me when I was growing up. So I've got memories of just like the disappointment of relapse, because you know like you're clean and suddenly everything is just unstable and it's all, it all reverts back to the old days and it was just like, that was really hard. When you love someone so much, you just want them to be clean. It was, it was difficult, you know? I remember you being really angry. You you were angry with me, and and I had and I had every right. I had every right to be angry as well. You'd just be sleepy all the time. You'd just be kind of like vacant. It, it was hard to kind of like come up and talk to you about my day, or you know, have like mm. a cuddle. No, you you can't really love anyone properly when you're intoxicated with opiates. Just kills all feelings. It just kill numbs you. Sort it of just thing. numbs you completely. Yeah, I can only imagine how difficult. That must have been for you, and you know the con the constant lying and de and denying what was going on. I remember you just Sam just popping around the shop to get some milk. It was, it was like your it was like your code word for like I'm going to go and score some gear. Like and it was, you may as well just said I'm just going to go and score some gear because I knew when you said like. I'm just popping around the shop for, to get some milk. You know, you never, you never came back with milk, but it was like I just, I knew that, that that's what it meant. Mm. And it was hard, because I suppose I wish, I, was, I always just didn't want to let you go. I always used to think, why can't you be clean? Ain't, ain't we enough at home, you know, me and, mm. me and mum and George and stuff. I can only imagine how difficult that must have been for a little boy. I mean, I, I can remember thinking at times is like, the only one suffering here is me. You know, I'm the one addicted to drugs. They're, they're just getting on with their lives. Well, that, now, when I think about it, it's like how selfish and how deluded that you can be to think that. At the time, did you know you had, had a mental health problem? No, I didn't know, but there was always, there was, you know, when drugs and alcohol come along for me at the age of 13, it really did, I feel it kind of, in some level probably saved my life for a while, you know, because it medicated how I was feeling. Right. So, but of course I didn't know that. I didn't know that until... Save your life in what way, what do you mean? Well, I don't know whether I would have, you know, been able to carry on really without, you know, how I felt, so... I can't believe that, I didn't know. Well, I just thought so... you were like, I thought you kind of got, I thought you were, I thought it was the drugs that messed up your life, but it sounds like even before that, like you were still, really struggling emotionally and stuff, and you were... Yeah, I think I was already showing kind of mental health issues really young. But, you know, my granddad suffered from depression. My dad suffered from depression. My mum still suffers from depression. I've suffered from depression. 
you know, it's... I understand, I almost sort of understand, like, because of the life you went through, the feelings that you must have had as a kid growing up, so you just self-medicated. I always used to think, you know, the drugs are more important or the drug, you, you know, you love the drugs more, and I've, I've realised it's not like that. You know, how, how, how could you, in that moment where you were, you were, you were self-medicating with heroin, how could you be loving and affectionate towards me? Like, it just wasn't, it wasn't possible. No. I'm lucky you still talk to me when, when I... You know, thank God we have what we have today. But yeah. I think that, you know, I need to stay clean so that, you know, I, you're... so that your kids never have to see me like that.